Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk, the show where I talk to people within Fusion or Prague. My name is Johan Stensland, and today I have a very prominent guest for you. He started his career back in the 80s with a rock band called Spellbound. He was the founder and leader and lead singer of Spellbound, and they released two studio albums back in the 80s. In the 90s, he uh, won a national competition, a kind of a talent show, and he won that with his band Solid Blue. He was the founder and leader and lead singer of Solid Blue. But all you prog fans, you might know him best from either uh, that he has been the frontman for Roy Nostalt's The Flower Kings for almost three decades. Uh, and he appears and sings lead on more than 10 of their albums. Or you might know him best from his own project, HFMC, a progressive rock band uh, that has released five studio albums and are about to start working on their sixth studio album. Uh, so he is an amazing singer. So I am very happy and fortunate and honored to have this guest coming to the show. So here is Hasse Fröberg. Hasse Fröberg, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy to he have you here. Thank you for having me. It's great. It's a pleasure, Johan. It's been a while since we last talked. I don't know how many years, but it's... Yeah, it's been a while. It's, it's, it's been far too long, actually. Yeah, you're right. I want to tell the viewers that we kind of, we know each other, but we're not, we have never been like close friends. And I think we shared a stage, we played together, and I think only once. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think I do. I think, I'm, I think you are referring to the, the show we did with Spellbound at uh, Barovjak. Exactly. In Uppsala, where you uh, were a prominent guest. <laughs> I don't know about prominent, but yes, I did my best uh, Rob Halford imitation back then. I think it went down a storm, if I remember correctly. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it sure did. So, so, but over the years, we met and we socialized just a little bit here and there, bits and pieces here and there. And there's one thing that I take away from you and, and that have stuck with me about you as a person. And it is that you are modest. You are like a nice guy and you're kind of polite. And as opposed to a lot of other musicians, especially when we were younger, you never had an attitude. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I think, first of all, I think you're right, but uh, not without an ego. We, we all have egos, uh, we, right? We, we, we all have. and uh, But I think I'm kind of... Uh, to me, if I'm, if I'm talking about music, the, the, the important thing is the end result. I, I kind of choose my battles. Uh, I have no, no problem speaking my opinion uh, or so, but, but uh, if it's about tiny, tiny details or so, I, I, I never go into a discussion over that because it's mainly give bad energy or, or something like that. So. I, and also, if, you, if you're thinking about people in the business, musicians, uh, as you said, they all very often have an arrogant attitude or something like that. But I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I think it's just as easy as that. So, so what you're saying is that it's part like the, just the way you are, just you being you. And, and it's also a part that is a conscious choice that you, you choose to be this way. When I'm out in, what do you say, the everyday life, the everyday routine, 
I think I am a pretty nice guy. I, I like to believe that. And I, I have a quite, quite an even temper. I very seldom get mad or angry. And so, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nice guy, I think, actually. Yeah, I think you're a nice guy. But let's let's back up to you said, but I do have an ego. Uh, talk about that. Let's say uh, like uh, let's say it's five guys, and uh, very often if you're five guys, you have very different opinions on most things. I'd say on everything from mixes or what we should wear on stage or whatever. And uh, I let the guys. Speak freely, speak their mind freely, and uh, as long as I'm fine with it, I, as long as I'm fine with what they're saying, I don't do anything. But if I think, well, it depends on which band it is. If, if I'm talking about HFMC, where I'm the leader, uh, I, of course I say, well, I don't think that is the right way to do it or whatever. I have no problem expressing my opinion, as I said. But uh, uh, the same goes for the Flower Kings. If I have, uh, if I think some something, of course I'll say it. But but um, in that case, I know that Rowena has the last word. But uh, I mean, everyone is entitled to say what they think. So, but I, ha I have no problem in doing that. And uh, it happens, but it's on rare occasions that I turn uh, a little angry, and, and everyone gets. Some people almost panic when it happens because it's it's very rare. <laughs> yeah, it's a rare thing. I, I get it. Yeah, but but you have no problems like putting your foot down when you have to, at least in your own project where you are the leader. I have no problem. No. Lucky for me, I very seldom have to do it. So it's a pretty. If we're talking HFMC, it's an easy going band. So. The amount of the heated discussions are at the minimum level, I'd say. Normally a smooth ride to play with those guys. The guys are, are really nice. Uh, but I guess your leadership skills must have been like uh, developing over these years. How do you lead people? How do you make them be that nice and listen to you and, and follow you? Oh, I'm not sure I have a good answer, but I, once again, I try to be me and and, uh, and uh, I like to think, once again, if you're talking about HFMC, I like to think as the band being a democratic band. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion about mixes, about, I know, I know for instance, when it comes to uh, stage clothes, forget about the clothes. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, if, if we're talking about uh, you're mixing an album, yeah, I know, I, uh, I know that, uh, for instance, Anton is 20 years younger than me, and our, you say, references are yeah. very, very different from each other. Yeah. So when, when he comes with his uh, uh, feedback, I sometimes don't even know what he's talking about because he has what he's listening to is so different from what I'm listening to. Yeah, It's outside your frame of reference. Yeah, it, it is almost. Uh, and uh, the same goes for him, I think. But uh, at the end of the day, we, we managed to, to speak the same language. And, and uh, at the same time, I'm saying we are five guys in the band and, and everyone has, when it comes to mixes and sounds and so on, everyone has different opinions about everything almost yeah. so you need to balance it right to make uh, make the guys happy but at the same time not uh, uh, you have to stick true to your own ideal of sound at the same time so it's a tricky yeah. situation so uh, let's move on when you started out as a singer in your teens i guess yeah uh, early teens yeah so i heard you uh, I don't know how old I was, but it was a long, long time ago. Uh, and I perceived you as a low pitch, like a baritone singer. But now, if you look up Hasse Fröberg on Wikipedia, Wikipedia, it says you're a high-pitched singer. Well, would you say those assessments are accurate, or are they weird, or how do you see this? I'm a tenor, I guess. 
uh, and uh, though I've never considered myself as being a low pitch singer, uh, I don't have that much bottom in my voice, uh, not that much depth to it. And uh, yeah, I think I'm a, I'm a tenor. That's the easiest way to describe it. I, I can, I can sing the high C on any given day, full voice, even though it's a bit more raspy today than it was back in the day. So I can still, and on a good day, a couple of notes over that full voice. But on the other hand, I don't have any falsetto to talk about really. So so, so my perception that you didn't sing very high when you started out, is that, would you say that I was wrong? I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I just think I didn't challenge my voice back then. I was more or less singing in a pop band or I was, I don't know when you heard me the first time, but the, the music back then, I didn't strive to, to sing those high notes. So it's, uh, I was, and, and uh, to be honest, I didn't want to sing. I was, uh, I was the one that refused the least. To ah, sing. So okay. I, I get you. I started singing and uh, I wasn't that comfortable as being as, as a singer in the beginning. So ah, I okay. think that's why. Ah, okay. Uh, so now uh, when when you see you see that, uh, when you hear that description on Wikipedia, you're a high-pitched singer. How do you feel about that? Is, is it... The, 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 first, the first thing that comes to my mind is that they probably... Uh, they compare me to Roy, maybe because he has uh, a deeper voice than me, and yes. I, uh, maybe that's it. I don't know. I don't yeah, know yeah. So, but you do sing low sometimes, and, and I think about uh, uh, the exception when you sing "Rain" from Parallel Life. Yeah, that's a beautiful song, and you sing like much lower than you normally do. Yeah, the, the thing is that uh, it was Shell, the, the guy that, uh, the sound in it, and Shell Sambai, the guy yes, the sound yes. in it at that time, he convinced me to do it. Uh -huh. I, when, I, when I wrote the song, it was one octave higher. Yes. And he said, no, 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 I think it's so mellow and it's so beautiful. Try to keep it, try to sing in a, yeah, in, in, in the lower octave. And that's, that's how... Uh, and it ended up that way actually and I didn't believe uh, at first I didn't think oh it won't work it will I won't have any power down there and, and it will not sound natural but well it sounded pretty good it, it's a long time since I heard it but I remember I was kind of surprised of the result actually it, it uh, turned out better than I thought it would yeah I, I when I listened to it I, I immediately reacted like this is not normal for you to sing this low but i oh, liked it's, it. It's not, it, yeah. it and and it it, it uh, creates the, that contrast that yeah. when you go high it it creates that that tension and then something something is happening yeah you're you're absolutely right it was it was not my intention to start with but uh, uh i mean you never know and uh, sometimes good things happen when you go out of your comfort zone yes and, uh, this is one of those cases i think ah, cool cool yeah. uh let's move on uh one thing another thing which i think is extraordinary about you is that your voice is truly unique there's no one else that sounds even remotely like you and and part of that i've come to understand i think i understand uh is because you have developed your voice yourself uh, I remember you telling us on social media once that you've had like two or three uh, singing lessons in your life. So can you talk about that? H has that been like a conscious thing from the get-go or how, how did you work with your voice? The thing is, when I, when I kind of uh, realized holy Christ, I'm the singer of the band now. And, and, and I mean, uh, back then I was what I did, I was more or less just shouting. That that was what I was doing. And you know, if you played two nights in a row, the voice was was gone after the first ten minutes of the second evening. So, if I'm gonna sing, I better learn how to do it. 
And this was sometime maybe 88 or 89. Uh, I got, I contacted this guy. Uh, he was called, he, he's, he doesn't live anymore. Uh, let me see if I get it right. Bo von Sydow. Bo von Sydow, yeah. Yeah. He was an opera singer and he, uh, Jussi Björling was his teacher. All right. Yeah. Uh, and the, to make a long story short, I, I did I did three lessons. I took three lessons, 40 minutes each. The only thing we he, he we worked on how how to breathe correctly, and uh, that was the main thing. The breathing yeah. was absolutely yeah. the main thing. Yeah. And also where to put the, the what do you say the A's and E's and O's the vowels. In, Yeah, the, yeah, vowels. Vowels. Yeah. Yeah. the vowels, yeah. Placement. Where to put them in the mouth. Yeah. Uh, so, and that was, that was what I did for those three lessons. Yeah. And it had such, an, such a huge impact on my voice. So it took about a week. Uh, all of a sudden, a new voice em emerged out of me. That It was like it came out of nowhere. And... Uh, But and at, at the very beginning, I was staying too true to his lessons, so I kind of forgot myself. But after a while, I understood that well, maybe I should stick to doing this, but then adapt his technique. And after a while, I kind of find my way as a singer. Yeah, and that's the way I've been doing it ever since, and yeah. it's been it's been working out really, really good because I. I've been touring all over the world and, and uh, not that many off nights. So it's, no, it's been working really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember when that happened uh, because I heard some, some uh, spellbound tapes. You went into the studio and, and made some, some demo and yeah. I, I heard something is different. And the vowels, and you, you talked about the placement of the vowels. Yeah. And I heard your E's and, and, and your uh, A's, they were yeah. different. Uh, so, so that was because of that. Yeah, it was. But that was all you needed. I mean, that is amazing. Yeah, it was uh, because, I, I mean, I've heard stories about that guy. Carola went there. Yeah, he was kind of the, the hot thing, right? It was a hot thing. So, so do you ever see like a vocal coach these days? Or are there vocal coaches on YouTube that you follow or, or that, that you admire and then learn from? Or No, not really. Uh, I haven't taken any lessons since then. And, and uh, uh, no, I, I've stayed true to my vocal technique since then. And uh, I'm feeling, yeah. feeling pretty comfortable about it, actually. And it took a long time for me to even... Uh, like my voice actually in the beginning I was oof, I wasn't sure about the way I sounded at all and uh, as you said I don't sound like anyone else and I couldn't really compare I said, it's easy if I, if, I, if I could say I sounded like Bruce Dickinson or Bruce Springsteen or but I, there was none I could compare myself to so I didn't really have that help either but nowadays to tell you the truth uh, You want some people has come up to me and say that I sound a little bit like Steve Perry. That's happened. Ah, ah, oh, journey. Times. Yeah, and first I didn't take any notice at all. When I heard the the uh, Moon Safari guys say, "Oh, I see you sound so, you sound very much like Steve Perry. You got that kind of blah 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 voice." And mm, yeah. At that time I was. That was a time I understood maybe there is something to it then, but I can't hear that myself. Absolutely not. But if if those guys uh, uh, say it, I, I, yeah, I'll take it seriously at least. At least. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But but uh, to have developed the voice the, the way you have and sing so extremely well as you do and make it last and develop that stamina that you have. You can do show after show after show. That's just amazing to me that you, you have done this. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, the alternative would have been dreadful, I'd say. So, I'd, I mean, the, the hours put in is, is what uh, makes the difference, I believe. Uh, so, it, uh, that's... Uh, and, um, I mean, I haven't been doing any drugs and I'm, my drinking is quite moderate and so on. So, I think that, that also... And I don't smoke, which I think is... Uh, you're seeing it's a good thing to, to not smoke. Yeah, yeah. Want to follow up what we said about your voice now and and yeah. the the uh, uh, stamina that you have. I think no, I know. I read one of your uh, posts on social media, and you told us that under a stressful period in your life, you lost your voice. Have I told that? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It was around. Uh, I didn't lose it completely. But, no, but, but your singing voice, you, you were not comfortable like going yeah, on stage yeah, because I, I it, it, it didn't work for you. That must have been horrible. It was horrible. My, the, the, my worst experience was, because it's, it, it's actually started before. The, I think it was 2007. We were touring on uh, the Sum of No Evil. We had Pat Mastelotto on drums. So that's why we... Uh, that's one of the reasons I remember it. The, the other reason is, is that I was really struggling with my voice. And I remember we, we, played, we played in Norway, that was the first show, and on the way there we, we crashed with a moose just outside Ian shopping. Yeah, with this big night rider, you know. So, yeah. we, were, so the, the, and we were supposed to go overnight, you know, on the night rider from Uppsala where we had been rehearsing to Oslo. And so that there was no sleep that night, and uh, we had to fix. To make a long story short, the, the the start of the tour was a nightmare, and my voice was bad to start with. And I remember by the time we got to, I think there was a sixth or seventh show, where somewhere in Germany it started to get better. And the last show was in uh, Lund, that Meiriet, in the, and that. The, and that, uh, instead of going the other way around, that the voice gets more and more stressed for each show. It was the other way around. It got better and better. So by the end of the tour, I sounded pretty much uh, uh, as I should, actually. And the, cool. yeah, the last, last three or four shows was totally okay. But the beginning was yeah. not good. But you didn't have to cancel any shows? Did not cancel, no. Oh, okay. And lucky for me, the, the, you, that particular tour, there were quite m more Royner songs in the set than, than, uh, than, it, than it normally is. Which yeah, was okay. Good. This was very good at that time. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, cool. Here's a new one for you. What's up with uh, Uppsala and progressive rock? Is there something in the water? I guess it is. I mean, the, there is a history with, uh, I mean, uh, Kaipan, Samla Mamas, Manna and all that stuff. And Sheikh Ahmed, not to forget. Yes. <laughs> and you so, and Roy Na and... Yeah, and uh, Manticore and... Uh, yes. Yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, we have a history of, of, of progressive rock, actually. I mean, as far back as the 70s. So... Those guys were, I mean, more or less at the same time as when, when uh, Genesis and Jess and all those bands reached the yeah. heights, you know. Uh, yeah. They yeah. were playing at the same time, which is pretty yeah. cool. It is. It is. Yeah. So, so I mean, I think it started there probably. Uh, and then we've had all the. For being in Sweden and being a. Uh, down of the size it is Uppsala, at least the way it was, was yeah. there were quite some places to play. It's not like that anymore, unfortunately. No. But there was lot of, lots of live uh, places for live music. Yeah. And for those uh, uh, out in the world, the big world outside Sweden, who don't know Uppsala, Uppsala is a city uh, one hour north of the capital, Stockholm. And Uppsala is now is it 200,000 people something like that uh, but yeah. when we when we grew up it was like uh, 100,000 yeah, prob so, probably something like that yeah. 
All right, so let's go on. I have a confession. I uh, I am a bit embarrassed about this. Okay. But here goes. Uh, it's about the your development as a singer. Uh, when I first heard you, and this is like forty years ago. Yeah. Uh, I, more than 40 years ago. Yeah, it's probably more than 40 years ago. And I was... Uh, I failed to recognize your talent. Uh, and I'm a bit shamed over that today. Uh, and and I, I was probably too self-absorbed to recognize anybody's talent but myself. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's the way it was. I, I, I had an attitude, okay, I did. But uh, today I am the first to praise you as a singer and tell everybody how great you are. Uh, how do you see your journey developing into the professional that you are today? It has very, very much to do with... Uh, with uh, I've been taking it quite seriously, actually, from, from day one, even though we were nothing, we were nothing. We, rehearsed and played a lot and I was always trying to make myself better, make the band better, make the songs better and I think that has followed me the, through the years actually, the, that kind of uh, uh, attitude to the whole thing and uh, and now I've come to the point where I've uh, now I'm feeling really comfortable with myself where I am as a singer and and so on. And as I told you before, in the beginning, that was not the case. Certainly not the case. I was uh, really trying to find my way as a singer, more or less. But uh, to me, the funny though, uh, the funny thing though is, uh, I think I actually peaked as a singer uh, around early nineties. Uh, if you talk, are you serious? If you're talking about power. Power. Okay, power. But yeah, N not not how I interpret things or whatever, but if not you your expression. The, the power of the voice. Yeah. Okay. It, it, that was, it was a peak around ninety two, ninety three, ninety four, I think. But s since then, the voice has gained other things. Yes. Uh, and uh, we're not playing three minute songs with just one kind of uh, style. Uh, some songs have different styles of uh, require uh, require different styles of singing. Yes. And uh, I've been uh, today. I'm a lot better uh, of doing that than I was maybe ten or fifteen years ago. I think so. You have to take the good with the bad. Yeah, I might not have the same power. It might be a little bit more raspy, but on the other hand, I, I think I. I am better to tell in a, tell in a story. I am better um, yeah, to, to find uh, this part of the song. What uh, what does it need? Well, it needs me having a happy voice. I will sing like so there's sunny sky outside, and and this needs a, I need to be behind the grid and be cool and laid back, and you know it, those things. I'm a lot better at those things today than I was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So your let's your... make it 15 years ago. Yeah. So your palate has increased, even yeah, though your that's... volume has backed off a little bit. So your palate yeah. and your expression, uh, your ability to express yourself has. That has... is correct. Yeah, because there is something I always have been impressed by you is that you. You touch upon this yourself. You you get better and better and better and better. It's like you require constant improvement. As you said yourself, but what can I do better? What can I do better until next time? Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, that that is... I don't think that's unique. I think most artists are trying to get better for each year or for each project or whatever so it's uh, but but that's definitely definitely a big part of why i've uh, why i am where i am today and why i sound the way i sound today uh, if i would have been a lazy bastard i would not have been here i think i'm pretty sure of that no i guess 
what you're saying is, is, is it rings true to many artists, but uh, I guess many people, they would have been kind of okay with, with how you sounded back in the 90s, and you could have stopped there. Okay, I'm good enough. And just yeah. ride the waves after that. But you didn't do that. You kept on improving. Yeah. But, I mean, at the same time, I, I have to confess, it's nothing that I think of every day. Now I need to improve. Now I need to get better. It's just, a, you know, when you have a recording in front of you or you have a tour in front of you, and you're always a little anxious. Uh, what will happen? What, what will... Whatever, you know. But, but I, it's at those points I'm thinking, now is the time to... So I, I actually, before... Before, it's, before there's a tour, before there's a recording, I start to seeing on a daily basis. Because between, I don't, I'm, then I'm lazy. I don't sing <laughs> at, that, that, as much as I should. Uh, it's easy to pick up a guitar and play a little, but to stand in the living room and start to sing all of a sudden and feels mm. kind of weird if you don't have a yeah. mission for you singing, like a, like a thing you, you're, you have in front of you. So uh, maybe I'm a little lazy after all, but uh, um, I'm very serious when it when there's things uh, happening, when the things are started rolling, started to roll. I always try to prepare as uh, yeah as good as I can. Yeah, cool. So uh, let's go on. Uh, when you go into the studio to record with your band HFMC, and you listen back to your vocal takes. What is it that you listen for? What is like the core elements you, you need to be there for you to be happy with the take? Ooh, uh, it, of course it depends on what kind of music, what, what, what this, and what the song is about. If, if it's a, I mean, rock in tune or if it's a ballad or whatever it is, but Number one is, uh, I, it's nice to be fairly on pitch. Uh, <laughs> okay. That is, no, no matter how you look at it, it's quite important to not be too far away from the pitch. But then it's how to make the, the, the most of each and every section or uh, part of the song. Uh, because... Uh, one part might, uh, as I told you before, might uh, need a raspy, rocking style kind of voice, and, and the next might need a super smooth uh, kind of singing. So uh, it depends on the music, actually. But, but pitch is number one, and then uh, uh, that has gotten more and more important over the years, and that is timing, because I am. A little bit, I mean, back in the day, I was a little bit forced when I sang. I was very much on. Yep. Uh, now I like to be not after the beat, but definitely. Yeah, but you lay back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, little bit, a little bit laid back. Yeah. So, so uh, I want to ask some follow up because I think it's, it's very interesting. You touch upon pitch, that yeah. pitch, you need to be in the ballpark. Uh, you, you can't be that far off when when it comes to pitch. But I want to touch upon the the new. They're not really new anymore, but the the modern tools that we work with, auto tune, and and today it's standard to always tune the vocal performances. All mixers and producers they tune the vocal performances. If you not tell them not to, how do you work? with this have you like have ha, do you have like a philosophy when it comes to this you can't tune my vocals or yeah go ahead and do whatever you need to do or how what is your philosophy well i mean i'm aware of uh, melodyne and all this and uh, uh my philosophy is you need to be careful i mean uh i use it on my voice if if let's say if if the take is perfect but there's just one little sour note or then of course you can just push that note or whatever but when you put every note exactly in pitch it, it sounds artificial to me it's you hear it's because no one is singing like that not even our heroes which you thought were 
super um, on pitch when you grew up and when you listen to them to the, today i mean they <laughs> little funky here but but i mean yep. still still they sounded great and um, so yeah you you got to be careful that, yeah, that's so, why so what what do you tell the 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 sound engineer when he he reaches for his melodyne and he's gonna do this, do you tell him like I have a philosophy when it comes to this, and and it goes like this: this is the way we're gonna work. Or how do you like communicate? Uh, I mostly worked with Petrus Königsson, and and he's got the same philosophy, and he he don't want to use the the pitch correction machines too much. We mainly use them on. Uh, on uh, harmony vocals, yeah, because that saves a lot of time. Yes, saves a lot of time. Yeah, uh, but when it comes to lead performances, uh, not that much actually. And, and uh, when I when I record for HFMC, I maybe the way I record my vocals is I do one verse at a time. I do sing it maybe ten times. And out of those 10 times, uh, and maybe maybe if I'm lucky, I can use half of it as it is. And then I kind of use maybe a word here and there from the different yeah. takes, you know, to make yeah. it sound yeah. good. It's called comping. If, yeah, yeah. And if that doesn't make it, I might use Melodyne. But, but yeah. I mean, uh, Petrus really hesitate to use it. So... Uh, I like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. You, you, very, very interesting to hear. Because uh, uh, I'm not 100% in pitch. Uh, nobody uh, is, right? Nobody is. Uh, nobody is. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's been great. We have been talking about a lot of things. Some deep, some more shallow. But, but it's it's been fun. It's been great. I'm really happy that you wanted to come and visit. So thank you, Hasse. Thanks a lot for being here. I thank you, Johan. It's been a pleasure. It was actually a lot of fun talking to you. And uh, uh, we've been talking about things I normally don't talk that much about. So it's been, uh, it's been great fun. Thanks for having me. Bye -bye. Cool. Bye bye. So there you have it, Hasse Fröberg, and Hasse is going to come back to the channel uh, in a future episode because the interview was so long. We had so much to talk about, so I had to cut it up into pieces. And in the next part, Hasse is going to tell us about the five most influential singers to him and his life, and he's going to share some other thoughts with us. That's going to be great. So... Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you like my content. Thanks for watching.